We're learning how to tell time in this chapter, and this is telling time to the hour and half hour. We're at lesson 7.3. So let's do a real quick review. This is the face of an analog clock. The numbers and the little lines make the face. And the long hand is the minute hand. That would be the thick blue one. See this thick blue hand that's pointing right here? That's the minute hand, okay? And the short red hand, that's the hour hand. And some analog clocks have another hand called the second hand. It counts the seconds and it goes much quicker than the hour hand or the minute hand. You can actually see the second hand move. All right? So each time the minute hand moves around to the next little line, a minute has gone by. When you see the minute hand and it moves from one little line to another little line, that's one minute. That's another minute, that's another minute, that's another minute. So it moves to each minute, okay? And each time the minute hand moves completely around the clock face, an hour has gone by. So every time this minute hand goes completely around, an hour has gone by. Time to the hour is when the minute hand is pointing to the 12. Now you see we don't have an hour hand on here because it's as long as this minute hand is pointing to the 12, wherever the little red hour hand is pointing to would be the number, and then we would say o'clock. If the hour hand was pointing to the 1, we'd say 1 o'clock, because the minute hand is pointing to the 12. If the hour hand was pointing to the 5, we would say it was 5 o'clock. So the important thing is the minute hand is pointing to the 12. That makes the o'clock. All right, and when this blue minute hand, and they're not all blue, some are black, some are silver, some are different colors. It depends on what kind of clock you have. When the longer minute hand is pointing to the six, then it's a half hour, and we would say 30. So if the hour hand was pointing in between here, we would say it's 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, see, like that. So the minute hand really helps us, doesn't it? All right, so let's take a look at this. When the minute hand points to the 12 and the hour hand is pointing to the 1, it's 1 o'clock. So remember, whenever that minute hand is pointing to the 12, we say o'clock, all right? We can write it as a one with this little colon with two zeros. It's one o'clock. Now, when the minute hand is pointing to the six, the hour hand is going to be in between the one and the next number, two. Then we say it's 130, okay? Now the reason that the hour hand is not pointing exactly to the one is, let me show you. I have this teaching clock that can help me. And as you can see, I've got the blue one marked as minutes and the short red one marked as hours. Right now, the minute hand is on the 12 and the hour hand is pointing to the one. It's one o'clock. Now these are connected to each other like gears. And as we move the minute hand, the hour hand starts to move. Watch it move away from the one. See that? And as the minute hand comes down to the six, the hour hand moved to in between the one and the two. If the minute hand were to keep going, the hour hand would move to the two for two o'clock. See that? They're connected to each other like gears, okay? So that's why when we're at a 30 and it's pointing to the 6, the hour hand is going to be just past the number 
for what it is. So this would be 230. It's not on the 3 yet. When the minute hand comes back around this way to the 12, then it will be 3 o'clock. And then when the minute hand comes back down, it'll be 330. So see how they're connected? So the minute hand is making the hour hand move, okay? So now this minute hand is on the 12 and the hour hand is pointing to the 2. So it's 2 o'clock. Whenever the minute hand points to the 12, it's o'clock. The minute hand came around and pointed to the 6 and it made the hour hand move to in between the 2 and the 3. And we always read it as the one it just passed. And it just passed the 2. It's not on the 3 yet, so it's 2.30. And we would write it with a 2 and then the colon and a 3, 0. 2.30. All right? When both the minute hand and the hour hand are pointing to the 12 like this, then it's 12 o'clock. The minute hand is pointing to the 12, so it's an o'clock, and the hour hand is pointing to the 12, so it's 12 o'clock. See? When the minute hand comes around and points to the 6, it's going to make the hour hand move in between the 12 and the 1. It will be 12.30. We write it as a 12 with the colon with a 3 and a 0. See? So they're connected. The minute hand makes the hour hand move. All right? Now, there are 24 hours in each day. We can see that we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's half a day. There's 12 hours on an analog clock. And the hour hand goes completely around 1 through 12 two times a day. It goes around 12 hours in the a.m. and 12 hours in the p.m. And that makes 24 hours for one day. 12 plus 12 is 24. See? We add the 1's. 2 plus 2 is 4. And we add the 10's. 1 plus 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 24 hours. See that? So in the morning time, the hour hand is going to go completely around. And then after lunch, it's going to go completely all the way around until the morning again. So let me show you. I made a very long number line here, and you can see we go from midnight, which is 12 o'clock, like when you celebrate New Year's Eve in the middle of the night. Okay, so that's midnight. Here's 12 o'clock again at lunchtime, and then we're going to go back to midnight again to the middle of the night. All right? And we have all the hours in between. Now, the first part from midnight to noon, which is lunchtime, is called a.m. That's the morning. You're sleeping here, and then you probably get up around here to get ready for school, and then you go to school, and then you eat lunch, okay? And that's called a.m. That's the morning. A.m. is short for the Latin anti-meridium, which means before midday. It means morning. So that's midday. Noon is the middle of the day. It's midday. So a.m. is before the mid-middle part of the day, see? Then after lunch, we have the afternoon. See, that's noon, so this is afternoon. Doesn't that make sense? And by the time we get here, it's evening, and the sun's starting to go down, and you have dinner, and then you go to bed, and then it's midnight again. This part of the day, this is the second time the hour hand is going around 1 through 12, is called p.m., and p.m. is short for the Latin post-meridium. Post means after. It means past midday. So here was that midday at noon at lunch, and now we're past it. See? It's the afternoon and the evening. That's p.m. And it's easy to remember which one is which because a comes before p in the alphabet, and morning comes before evening in the day. See? So a is first. That's morning. All right? So I've got my clock here, and we can see that the minute hand is connected to the hour hand, and as the minute hand goes around one time, see, it makes the hour hand go to the next hour, all right? Now clocks are split into 12 hours, and each number for the hour hand 
is an hour. Every time the number hand moves to the hour hand moves to a new number, that's another hour, okay? And it goes around two times each day. This hour hand will go all the way around and then all the way around again each day. Now, each hour that this hour hand moves is 60 minutes. The minute hand is going past 60 minutes to get back up to this 12. Each number to the minute hand is five minutes. For the hour hand, it's an hour, but for the minute hand, it's five minutes. And each of these little lines is a minute. So we can count one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes. See? And each time this minute hand goes around one full time is 60 minutes. It's an hour. All right? So the numbers have three jobs. They tell us the hour. It's four o'clock. It tells us the minutes. So if it was right here, we would know that it was one minute past four o'clock. See that? And they tell us by groups of five. That's what the numbers are doing. So if the minute hand is pointing to the one, we know that it's not four o'clock anymore. We know that it's 4.05. See? It would be written as a four with a colon like that compared to four o'clock. See? We added five minutes. So the numbers have more than one job. They're telling us the hour and they're telling us the minutes by groups of five and they have a third job. They tell us the seconds by groups of five. So each minute is 60 seconds and the second hand goes around one time each minute. So here's my clock and it has the hour hand, it has the minute hand, and here's that faster second hand. We can actually count and see the seconds going by. Every time this second hand goes around one complete time, one minute has gone by. And it'll make the minute hand move one little line. See? Every time the minute hand goes completely around, it makes the hour hand move to a new number. Okay? I know it's a lot to remember. If you have to watch the video a second time, that's okay. A lot of people do that. Let's try some real quick problem solving. We're going to use the clock to solve. We write early, late, or on time. Can you see what time the clock says? Do you remember what happens when the minute hand is pointing to the 12? Tala's mother said to be home for dinner at this time. And Tala got home at 6.30. So was she early, late, or on time? Well, what time does the clock say? The hour hand is pointing to the six and the minute hand is pointing to the 12. And remember when the minute hand points to the 12, it's o'clock and the hour hand tells us which o'clock? It's six o'clock. Well, Tala got home at 6.30. So was she early, late, or on time? Hmm. She got home past 6 o'clock, so she was late. I hope she didn't get in trouble. Her sister got home at 5.30. Was her sister early, late, or on time? Well, 5.30, the hour hand hasn't even gotten to the 6 yet. So she was early. Her sister was early. She got there before she was supposed to. Her father got home at 6 o'clock. So was her father early, late, or on time? Well, if you said on time, you're right, because he got home exactly when dinner was starting. Okay? The clock says 6 o'clock, and he got home right on time. Okay? So... Remember that the numbers have three jobs. They tell us the hour. They tell us the minutes by groups of five. They can also tell us the seconds 
by groups of five. Every time the second hand points to a number, five seconds has gone by. We can actually count it. Watch. One, two, three, four, five. See? Five seconds. And the minute hand does the same thing. All right? So I know that was a lot of information, but we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about those five minute increments. And like I said, if you have to watch the video again, it's no big deal. People do it all the time. All right. And if you got it, well, good going. I'll see you next video. Bye.